I'm trying to make a centrifuge and uh, I'm looking through my junk piles to figure out what I have. This fan works. I have three ceiling fans, but they're only about 400, 450 RPM, something like that. Then I found this little guy. Couldn't power it and then I looked at the spec. It's DC 48 volts at 0.75 amps. That's pretty huge for a uh, computer fan. Uh, I got it for a dollar. And that's not uncommon. A lot of thrift type stores will sell you things that are worth a huge amount of money because they don't know what it is. <laughs> I haven't looked at what this retails for, but I know it's a heck of a lot more than a dollar. Another option I found was this coffee grinder, but uh, the coil seems to be shorted out, which is probably why I have this laying around to begin with. Some other options might be a vacuum cleaner, for example. Uh, I know a lot of people would use a drill, which is fine, but I don't have a drill laying around and I'm not going to buy one that will probably burn out from the duration. Out of all of these options, I would say that this fan is probably one of the best, because it's designed to run for a long period of time already. The only problem is getting that 48 volts. And I remembered, I have a lot of these old linear supplies for a 12 volt DC, and they're all about one amp. So I grabbed a bunch of these, and the thing about linear supplies is they tend to be cheap and dirty. And the way you can tell a linear from a switching offhand, if you don't know the difference and you don't want to open it up, basically a linear is going to have a really large transformer. And uh, this feels quite heavy. At 12 volts at 1 amp, this is a big heavy winding. So what I'll be doing is extracting transformers from all of these and probably using the exact same full or half wave rectifiers they're using. Now some of these test at around 16 volts and I know that that just means it's a dirty supply basically. It's peaking at a certain amount and my meter isn't updating frequently enough to see the waveform. So obviously if you have some laptop supplies those tend to be about 12 to 19 volts and I could have stacked those together but I wouldn't have landed quite at the right spot. If I had 12 volt supplies then I could of course do the same thing. There are plenty of 12 volt supplies for other things as well and those do tend to be switching and switching is totally fine as well but there won't be that much wasted power because each of these is one amp and uh, it runs on 48 volts at 0.75. I'm only wasting about a quarter of an amp on some of these. In theory this will be pretty ideal and it will use up these old supplies that I never have a use for because when you plug one of these in, they're on and they are costing you that full amount of power the entire time they're plugged in. These are what people call vampires. This for example is a switching supply and uh, I can tell because it's just so light. And you can also see that it's a much smaller size. Switching supplies are far more efficient and those will cost you a little bit when they're plugged in, but not nearly as much. It's interesting to see the different designs of these. None of these are identical. They're all very similar. Right here we have four rectifier diodes and an electrolytic capacitor. So what happens is you break up the waveform and uh, that leaves just peaks as it alternates. Uh, with these rectifier diodes it breaks it down to just peaks and then this electrolytic capacitor smooths out those peaks. And uh, you can see it's the same fundamental design with all of these. This is full wave, this is full wave, this is half wave. And right here, this one's by far the most sophisticated. It looks like this is actually regulating pretty substantially. And if I recall correctly, this was probably the only one that read a true 12 volts. When this is on, I'm actually getting 60 volts output, but I don't believe that's the effective voltage. And by that, I mean basically it's those peaks. You know, those peaks are lining up and making it appear like 60, but I think once it starts drawing current, it's actually going to be drawing closer to the equivalent of what it's actually supposed to be outputting, which is 48. Again, this has nothing to do with my configuration. This is just that these are some really cheap rectifier configurations and cheap smoothing electrolytic capacitors. So if I was to go through a secondary set of full weight rectification and a nice heavy duty set of electrolytic capacitors, I could probably get it to actually say it's outputting 48 volts. The main reason I'm taking this video is because I can't believe how much this is outputting in terms of the uh, airflow. It's pretty crazy. It, it could literally push itself off the table if it wanted to. So what's especially interesting about this is look at the number of these fins there are. 
Now, you may have noticed with the paper and the baggie that I was holding up, uh, it just seems to sort of sit in the air. And uh, it's because there, it's such a high density of these fins that it's not having that pulsing you get from typical fans. Like, for example, look at the number of fins on this fan. This fan, everything kind of flops around because it's getting hit with those uh, bits of air that are being pushed in sort of packets. But this is so much tighter, and I suspect partially also because of these. Yeah, you can see they're actually contrary. So what's happening is the air is actually being straightened out. And although it's still in packets, it's being broken up by the high density of fins and obstacles that are redirecting the airflow. So it's pushing just this static beam of output. It's really interesting. I've never seen anything like it, but I don't generally deal with high-end fans like this. Well, I was able to put a piece of black construction paper on here and a reflector, and uh, that measures at about 5,000 RPM. And that's with the resistance of these blades. Impressively, a dimmer switch actually works with this. I wasn't sure because this is brushless, but it's also DC. So I suppose it makes sense in that regard. So what must be happening is it is actually effectively lowering the overall voltage output. These are normally fairly expensive, but this was 50 cents. Again, you know, from a, from a thrift shop. This really nice fan was a dollar, this was 50 cents. These were free because they're just crap I'd laying around. I mounted this on cardboard because the uh, auto ignition temperature of something like paper or card cardboard is actually fairly high. Uh, I would bet that the resin would break down and short these coils before it would auto ignite the cardboard. Each of these linear supplies will draw about a quarter of an amp. So together they should draw two, and so I put a three amp fuse on here for safety. Well, annoyingly, I seem to have fried my other one of these. I also did something stupid. I also tied it into one of these sensor wires, and uh, I don't know, I may have fried some kind of brain in here. Yeah, clearly there are some pretty sophisticated electronics in here, so I guess I shouldn't be too surprised that I managed to uh, burn out the last one by hooking it to a sensor wire. I think I can get these uh, propellers off. I'll just have to remove these rivets with a drill. So I just did a quick RPM test and it's just under 7300 RPM now that the blades are off. This is what this piece looks like. So this looks like it should be pretty easy to mount in theory because I can just put some screws through it. So you don't have to tell me this is idiotic but I just wanted to see as a proof of concept if this would even work at all. So this is empty. A little bit of misalignment goes a long way with this sort of thing. <laughs> Let's add a little bit of load. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that just... Uh, kind of flew off and exploded. Yeah, there's a... <laughs> okay, well, on the bright side, nothing uh, really important was damaged. Just lost a couple sample cups and... Uh, well, this, yeah, this thing actually even broke. <laughs> that hot glue let go pretty dramatically quickly. I don't especially want to remove the... Uh, this housing, I don't want to destroy this housing, but at the same time, it's going to limit my options. I haven't completely figured it out, but I figured since I already destroyed this particular one in terms of the electronics, yes, it may be salvageable, but it already has a nice bearing assembly and housing, so I can probably use it as an opposing axle to help uh, focus any kind of movement that may happen. I also am a little bit on the fence about these sample cups. I just happen to have a lot of these. These are actually uh, urine sample cups. So I'm thinking I have a bowl right here, and then I have an opposing housing above, which just helps hold it down, and, uh, and then I can just load anything into it.